All right, welcome back. Um, uh, this is the next part we're going to make. It is the body of the indi of the uh, coax indicator. This is basically just a turning job, except for we have a we have a cross hole here that will have to be done on the mill. Fairly straightforward. There's a little feature here. The most important thing about this is this face right here and the bore, the central bore that goes through it, need to be perpendicular. Uh, they need to be square to each other. That is the most important thing because that, this face right here references to the bore. So they have to be square. Okay, so I've been going over in my head uh, the sequence of operations here. Um, this little taper here which is, is not really a functional thing as much this could be straight here but um, I like it so I want to keep that um, but it, it presents a little bit of holding problems flipping the part back and forth because you don't want to just hold on just this narrow edge or I don't so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off a piece that's a little bit long in this direction I'm going to chuck it up here and turn this pocket and these, this feature here and then I'm going to flip the part, cut off and hold it on this side. Cut off the excess, drill the hole and do this reference face. Now the only issue I can see there is maybe this pocket is a little tiny bit off of the hole because we've taken the part out and rechucked it. I don't think that's going to be too much of an issue because I'm cutting this side and the hole at the same time, and the, the pocket for the bearing at the same time. So as long as I get this face centered, then the hole should be fairly centered as well. And the bearing is not as important as the hole in this face because the bearing actually has a little bit of clearance to run in, in whereas the where the shaft goes this is where the shaft goes in this hole here um, it has virtually no clearance so let's get at it all right if I didn't mention this is aluminum by the way you want to see me wearing a glove uh, I'm wearing a glove because I got a dog bite on my finger and it needs to be kept clean and dry so I don't normally wear gloves on the lathe this is this glove will rip away if it gets caught in anything. It's just a vinyl glove. So just letting you know, I don't normally wear gloves, but I'm wearing a glove. All right, hopefully you can see that. I got it within uh, two thousandths. Yeah, two thousandths. I'm not gonna mess with it anymore. It's close enough for this operation. All right, I just put a couple marks on here. As you can see. And that's going to correspond to this line and this line. So I'm going to cut down to do the first mark and then we'll get this close we'll figure out what that angle is it's not it's decorative it's not functional so we can fudge around with it a little bit all right I switched over to a more standard uh, high-speed bit I just wasn't happy with the finish I was getting with the other one I have gotten some good finishes with it before but I just this is just not cooperating this is a lot better, much smoother. Do you guys remember Tom's techniques? If you've been if you've been watching YouTube videos for a while, you probably remember Tom's techniques. Um, this is one of his grinds. I mean, I don't think it's his grind, but this is one of. Uh, I downloaded some stuff off of his website that gave you uh, some different grinds, and this is this is one of them for turning. Um, works fairly well. Still getting some bird's nest. 
not quite got it dialed in where it's breaking the chip yet but it is what it is we're gonna move on here I gotta get this diameter now down to 28 oh yeah that's right we're at 40.4 so let's get a scratch off here so we need to take 12 so let's take uh, let's take five millimeters. That's uh, ten. Ten will be five aside. So ten millimeters in total. And that's a good healthy cut. You can tell I don't work in millimeters very often. That's what almost two hundred thousandths. Yeah, we're not going to take that. Let's uh, we're going to redo that. All right, that's a millimeter and a half. That's a healthy enough cut for this machine. See if it'll do it. What did I say that was? A millimeter and a half? Let's do a millimeter. Just not breaking a chip at that size at all. Try about 0.75 this time. See if I can break a chip. Still bird's nest. 0.6. It's like 0 0.6, 0 0.5 or 0 0.6 is where I'm going to be sticking at. That's giving me decent finish and I'm, I'm breaking chips. Let's split this, split this last cut in two, two equal cuts. Maybe, and maybe three equal cuts. So we're going to go. Uh, this is something that Steven Gotswinner was talking about in a video recently about uh, taking equal cuts as you approach your final dimension. And I um, thought it was a good idea. That way uh, you're not trying to sneak up on it. You're, you're taking a good healthy chunk each time. His explanation is better than mine. Okay, so got this set up. I think this is the best setup I'm gonna get. Um, I got my compound here at 30 degrees or 60 degrees, excuse me. And I'm gonna crank it that direction. I've got a uh, different tool bit in there to get back in the corner. with that finish there so I'm gonna leave it at that length right there I'm real happy with that finish let me get you a close-up of that you can see that that's a really nice finish that I just ground that bit that's a Tom Techniques grind I think that's a Rex 95 bit I might be wrong Drill that out big enough to where I can get a, a boring bar in there. Okay, got my boring bar set up. Got an indicator over here to see how far we're going to go. We're going to go 10 millimeters and let's go. I 
I think you get the idea. I'll bring you back when we're a little closer to the end here. Okay, so um, I just about made a terrible mistake. So I was going to the plans and I was going to do 22.2 for this. And I was going to bring you back because I had how about 21.9, 22.12. Okay, so I had about 0.08 to go. However, that was based, that, well, that all is based on a bearing that is 22 millimeters. And that's what I ordered, what I got. Not a whole lot less. I mean, that's, I'm sure that's within the margin, the, the tolerance margin. But I don't need to go any farther than I've already gone. Because what we want is just a tight sliding fit and that's what we have not loose loose in there but it has room to move and it's supposed to move so we're gonna leave that right where it's at now I'm gonna chuck it here of course and I want to protect this finish as much as I can so I'm going to put some aluminum on it yeah, I need to make some jaws, uh, some aluminum actual jaws for this, but I haven't made any yet, so I'm just going to kind of make some up. Probably out of beer cans. We're at 41.2, and I want to be 40. going to make the mistake I did with the bearing. I have a thrust washer here. Actual three dollar fender washer. And it needs to fit like that but we need to make a register for it. So I'm going to measure this and we're going to make it exactly that. So it's supposed to be 25 and it comes out to 25.1. So let's see how I'm going to do this. Let's uh find the edge right there we're going to zero that out and zero that out on our x-axis DRO and I'm going to go in this is what we say this was can't remember it's supposed to be 42 it's 42.02 so let's go in 42 minus 25 is 15, 16, 17. So if we go in eight, we should be close. I'm not sure how deep we want to go yet. We're going to go in touching. Set that zero on the other thing. And our thickness here is one millimeter. You guys can't see what I'm doing here. So I got zero on this one. That's feeding that direction. I got zero on this one. That's feeding that direction. Hope that makes sense. And find our washer and see where that's at. Not quite. A little bit off there. I need to go a little bit, a little bit deeper. And that sits as flat as flat can be. In fact, it holds itself on there. <laughs> I can't even get it off. There you go. All right, so there's the register. And there's our thrust washer. Sorry about the rain. Nothing I can really do about it. All right. Now, this is going to get attached with, I'm thinking super glue. 
I'm not doing that today though. So if anybody thinks that that's a bad idea, specifically Mr. Todd, let me know. Um, I know he does mention using Loctite. Uh, I've never used Loctite for a, in a flat surface like this. You know, I only use it as a lock, a thread locker. Who calls it for? So let me know what. So let me know whether you think that's a good, good or bad idea. All right, that's done. We got one more operation after I relieve this corner. All right, last operation for this video, we're going to drill the uh, bore in it. And I'm going to use uh, a 9 16 so I'm going to use a spotting drill first, then I'm going to use a 9 16 because that's 14.12 millimeters. And then I have a 15 millimeter reamer that I'm going to run through it. And I am going to use, I haven't used any fluids yet, but I am going to use some uh, WD 40 on this. How's that? How's the surface finish on that? <laughs> and looking in between the flutes there. Yeah, she's ugly. Just about dead on. And that measures everywhere, so we're gonna go with it. Oh no, this 15 millimeter bit don't fit in my half inch chuck. Whatever will I do? All right, sorry this is a little disjointed right here, but um, that reamer threw me through a loop a little bit because that was kind of my plan, and I actually tried to set it up in the tailstock with a holder that I had, which apparently is not a very good holder because it wasn't lining up very well, and it did a little bit of chowder right here. Let's see that. That's okay, nothing to worry about. I just finished it out with a boring bar and now I'm gonna clean that up a little bit. All right guys, uh, a little dirty around here right in a second, but uh, here we are. Part. Here's the bearing side. Bearing goes down in. Get it just right. No, no rattling. And it comes back out just like that. That's all fine. Surface finish is, uh, it's good. I, I love it. I mean, it's not super smooth. It's, not, it's super smooth. It's not. You can see the lines just a little bit, but that just means it's handmade, right? Washer bearing, washer side, perfect fit. If I do say so myself. Again, if you have any ideas of attaching this, I'm thinking super glue. What I'm what I'm worried about is liquid underneath of there. It, this has to be completely flat and concentric to the to the bore. And I'm worried if you know you get a little bit more of a glob of liquid on this part than that part, but maybe if I spin it as I'm doing it, and I'm I was thinking about putting a socket, putting it in the lathe and putting a socket on top of it to press it while it to uh, you, you know to use the lathe to press it while it dries. Okay, so this piece isn't done. Um, it's now got to be put in the mill and uh, holes drilled in it and then the indicator mount goes on. The bore came out pretty well. Even though I didn't get to use the reamer. But there we go. We will uh, get the uh, third part out hopefully in a few days. So thanks for watching guys. We'll see you next time.